Okay, so to start with, I thought we'd have a look at some of the, you know, the structures, the buildings we find around the realm that are very large. Now, this is uh, Baalbek in uh, Baalbek, Turkey, I believe, yeah, Turkey. And, you know, pretty famous. This is uh, these three blocks here. These are called the Trilithon because uh, there's three of them. And these are huge. Um, I think they're, I've forgotten what the estimated weight is, but it's hundreds of tons each. And of course, how did these get moved and put into place? You know, back they're telling us thousands of years ago uh, where there was no technology, right? No cranes. That's what they say. But also look at the size. These are people. Okay, so you can see that this man is about the height of this block. Okay, so this is like a six foot square block or even bigger, they're, they're rectang uh, yeah, rectangle. So, you know, so six by eight foot by God knows how deep. So why the size? You know, because we only build to the size that, that's manageable, that's easy, right? That's why we use bricks because they're easy to, to lay, to turn into walls. With things like this, it would be, you know, for people our size, it would be extremely difficult to move all these uh, rocks into place. And of course, you probably notice that as we go up, the rocks get smaller, right? Got these huge trilithon ones here. Then, you know, these, these are huge as well. These are really big blocks, but then small ones. And again, these, you know, these are still large blocks. You know, that's probably five or six foot long by three or four foot. Uh, but look at this, how they look like they've just been stacked up there. We've got gaps in the walls, we've got overhangs. So I'm not sure if I'd be too confident about standing here. But yeah, oversized buildings. And look at the size of the columns. How did they make them, you know, excavate them or turn them or whatever they did? And how did they stand them up? This is the Vatican. <laughs> um, Look at now, obviously, we don't have all of this obelisk. It's just a cut of a photo to show you the size of the people. But look at the size of this obelisk. Right? These are people. So you can see uh, these bollards at the front, they're about, you know, half the size of these people. It's what, three, three and a half, four, three, three and a half foot, three foot, <laughs> three foot, if they're six. Um, so, and then at the back, they're taller. They seem, you can see these people, these ones are about the height of a person. So, you know, five and a half, six feet. And they don't even come up to, or well, they just come up to this first base bit on this obelisk. Okay, we've got this pedestal. The obelisk doesn't even start until up here. I mean, that's like 50 foot in the air. Now, look at this building. Okay. <laughs> These are real people, real human-sized people. Look at the size of these doorways. Now, this is a small doorway. so it's not the best resolution, but you can see this is a person. This doorway is a good three times as high as them before we hit this lintel. This one, four, four times as high. Look at the size of these doors. Look at these columns. How tall do you think they are? I mean, what are they, 50 foot? How did they make those and how did they stand them up? And look at these lights. These are street lights. Now, unfortunately, there's no one standing right next to them. Oh, what have we got? Anything over here? Not really. But they look to be, you know, these base bits of the pedestal seems to be about the height of a person, you know, four or five feet, say. So what's the top? You know, 25 foot off the ground. If these were put in as gas lights, like we're told, how much light could a gas light actually give off, right? I'm thinking, you know, a good one, you'd have a circle like this. It wouldn't even touch the ground. So what use is it for people this size? If they were electric, of course, which we're told they weren't because they didn't have electricity, then they would work more. Um, but also if you were bigger, you know, the light would be at your head height, wouldn't that? I mean, look at these horse and carts. They just look like little toys. This is in France and another cathedral, you know, apart from all this antiquitech all over it, it's just covered. Now look at the size of the people here at the door. Look at this again, you know, this is a, I mean, this would be four times as high as them and this one would be five or six. 
Who were these doors built for? Why are they so big? Even the windows, they're like 20 foot windows. And actually one thing just on that last picture, look at the size of this person and look at the size of these statues of people. They're like three times the size of a person. Ridiculous. Now, this is a drawing and it just shows you tiny people in this amazingly huge, massive building. And this, it's an onculus. Uh, this looks like it's in the Vatican, but the inside looks different to what it is now. Uh, is it called the onculus? I think it might be. Um, but the inside looks different. But I mean, how's the size? It's just ridiculously oversized. Now, why would you do that? Why would you build something this big? This is the Vatican again. Uh, we got the full obelisk here. With, uh, they put a little cross on the top to let us know it's not Egyptian. It's definitely Christian. It's definitely to do with the Vatican, right? And just these tiny people. Like, look over here. This is a horse and cart. And look at the size of this pillar. Again, who were they built for? Even this fountain. Look at this fountain. Uh, this is a person. It's it's a 25-foot fountain. Does this dude look rather tall? Not sure. We'll get into tall people in a minute. This is inside uh, the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica. Is that right? Uh, and, I mean, again, just, I mean, apart from the intricacy, right, look at how this thing is finished. You know, again, we couldn't do this, you know, I mean, maybe over lifetimes, but I mean, these buildings like this are still everywhere, but there was definitely a lot more. I've been knocked over, but look at the size of the people. Like, seriously, how tall is this roof? Why is the question? Why would you? build so large you know you've got to use so much more materials takes so much longer you need so many more you know uh, people to build it you know artisans and craftsmen and builders and architects and designers and all this stuff and all the materials and you end up with a building like this which you know you can only use the top you know six or seven feet there's no floors in here and it's just this looks like it's made for bigger people, doesn't it? It's ridiculous. Uh, this is Egypt again. Uh, I think this is Abydos or around. And uh, it's just a drawing, not the best, but you can see the size of the people compared to these pillars. The Taj Mahal. We've all seen it. But did you know how big it was? Look at the size of these people. They are tiny. And I mean, just compare these people to these, you know, window arch things I mean, and this doorway. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Even these top bits that are open, look at the size of the people. They would, you know, you'd hardly see them above this wall. And, and of course, you know, this has got, again, see, a bit hard to see, but there's actually four balls there. Same here. And these are all like antennas and things. It's all antiquity. This is a resonator. So are these. Uh, these, they call them belfries. These um, are actually uh, etheric energy collectors. They, they, they collect ether, uh, you know, etheric energy, free energy from the ether. And we're still working out the, you know, how it worked properly. We've got most of it. And, and what we're thinking is that this was a spark gap generator. So you'd have a spark gap like a spark plug does, uh, which turns the energy into plasma. It has to turn into plasma to go across the gap. And when that happens, you get a massive energy increase. So you can, you know, put, you know, say five volts in here, run it through a spark, uh, through a gap, a spark gap, and you'll come out the other end with like, you know, 100 volts. So we'll get into the antiquitech. There's a lot to cover here. Now, this one here is Penn Station, old Penn Station or old Pennsylvania Station. It was in New York. And again, this is one of the names that keeps popping up in, in the USA. It's Pennsylvania. It's, uh, you see it a lot in old maps. 
in Florida, California, a few other bits and pieces. But again, look at the size of these people. Literally, the, the base of this light is, is as tall as these people. Okay. I mean, this is just ridiculous size. This is ridiculous. Now, this is in New York. Okay, it snows in New York. How would you heat this building? I mean, seriously, they want us to believe that someone has come along and designed this and, and got enough people to agree with them to get funding. Yep, let's build something this big and this intricate. Uh, that they've had all the industry to get all the brick, all the marble, all the glass, all the iron, all the everything that's needed and all the workers to run it, and all the transport. And then they've built it. And, and through that whole process, no one has asked the question, how are you going to heat this? It's going to be really, really cold and unusable, basically, in winter. No, they just went ahead and built it. You know, so, so it just doesn't make sense. This is Penn Station, Pennsylvania Station. They've knocked it over now, unfortunately. Uh, but this is it from the outside. Um, and, you know, looking fairly Greco-Roman, right? And this is what we see all over the realm. Always, just the same stuff. You know, the big columns, these are called porticos. And you know, the same thing, always got, you know, the clock. We're pretty sure that they're a later addition, part of the refacading. Down here we have our tram lines. We've got them in all the old cities. A few cars, horses, and a lot of very small people again look at this light this is a person standing back against this light pole and look how tall it is it's like three times as tall it's 20 foot in the air if that was gas because this is horse and cart we've still got horse and carts we're talking early 1900s probably we've got cars here so 19 you know 10 1920 um so maybe they were electrified but we've definitely got photos of of these when there was no electricity, these lamps. So again, how much light were they giving off if they were gas? But look at the size of the <laughs> look at the size of the people. I mean, why would you not build a building, you know, a, a quarter the size of this that's functional, that would cost you less, less materials, less everything? But no, they build this, and then of course they go, um, yeah, it didn't really work. We're gonna knock it over. So what really happened is this was founded. Uh, this, I mean, this was found, not founded. So they, they, this was found intact. This was built by, built by a previous civilization. And because it was so big and unexplainable, they knocked it over. And they had a really hard time knocking this over. It took a long, long time because the walls were so thick. So again, who built this?